I want to speak with us on what I've titled, What is Wrong with Me? I know that topic is rather funny. <laughs> you know, it was just apt for what I want to discuss today. And I want to try and break it down to about, I, I, will, I, won't, I don't want to rush it. I will, I will start in this session, do about 30 minutes, and then continue um, in the next session. Praise God. What is wrong with me? I know you may find that, that too funny again. But then it, it just, it's just apt for what I want to discuss today. Let us quickly pray. Father, we thank you for your word and the power therein. We ask, O oh Lord, that you illuminate our heart by your word today. And then shine your such light upon our life by your word today. Reveal things to us, direct us, instruct us, help us by your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Now, uh, as, my, as my title suggests, this message is an attempt to troubleshoot one's life when things are not going well. You know what troubleshooting means? Something is a computer language or majorly used for computer. Or at least I got to know the word troubleshooting from, I mean, computer engineering and science and all, what have you. When something is not working, you try to see why it's not working and how it can be corrected. And you can do the same thing for your life too. If your life is not working or you're having certain challenges, things are not working, going the way you expect, you can troubleshoot your life. You can ask yourself, what is wrong with me? And that's an honest question to ask, ask yourself. Things are not working, don't deceive yourself. Sit yourself down. I like that thing about the prodigal son. The scripture says he came to himself and said, see, I'm in such a situation where even the Servants in my father's house don't suffer what I'm suffering. So something is wrong. He said, in fact, he, he diagnosed himself, he saw what was wrong, and he, he, made, he made up his mind, I'll go therefore to my father's house, I will beg him, and he will accept me. Worst case scenario, will make me a servant. And that solved his problem. I think if many of us will have a meeting with ourselves like that, we'll solve a lot of our problem. So I'm sure that, I mean, that at some point in our lives, we will ask ourselves, what is wrong with me? What is wrong? At some point. Truth be told, it's not every time that things are working all right for us. All of us like to give that impression, particularly in, this, um, in these days of social media, everybody gives the impression that everything is working fine. The truth is that it is not true. Even for those who things are working fine for, they are still certain things in their life that are still not working the way they want it to work at the very least. So, everybody is asking that question. What is wrong? Okay? So, you may calm down. You are not the only person who everything is not working for. <laughs> there are 7.5 billion of us. Amen? So, you may want to calm down. You know? One of, the, one of the things I find that the devil does, that's why the scripture says there's no temptation that has come to you such as is not common to man. Paul writing to the Corinthians said, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10, uh, about verse 12. He said, it's not, there's no temptation, trial, tribulation, problem that comes to you such as is not common to man. You are not, there's no special problems. The Yorubas have a saying that when you tell somebody that this is your problem, we haven't seen the kind before. You are the first in the world. We're only trying to scare that person. That is a lie. We're only trying to scare that person. So calm down. You are not the only one who has problems or challenges or troubles, whatever you choose to call it. We all do. We all do. And at one, one point of our life, after the other, we have to ask ourselves, what is wrong? What is wrong? It's not a bad question to ask. It's not a bad question to ask. It's probably a good question to ask. Genesis 25 and verse 22, Genesis 25, verse 22, Rebekah went to the Lord in prayer. She said, if it do, be does with me, that is, if there's something, what is wrong? He said, Why is, what is wrong with me? It, uh, to paraphrase it, that's what she asked God. And what is her situation? She had been without a child for many years. Now eventually she has conceived. And now there is, she's having kind of a threatened abortion. Things are going upside down for her. She doesn't understand what is wrong. These are not the days where you have diagnosis. So the only diagnosis she could do was to go to God and say, God, what is wrong? And God explained to her, see what is wrong with you is this, is this. In fact, there is nothing wrong with you. It's just that you are carrying two nations 
in your stomach and in your belly. And this, this, and this is the future of these people. You know, but she has a question. What is wrong with me? What is wrong? What is wrong? So if you are at the jo that junction of your life now, do well to hear this message. Okay? And if things are going on quite well for you now, still pay attention. I'm sure you, you will need it uh, sooner or later. This message may come to you as your treatment right away. For some other people, it may just be a reserve message you will still need. Definitely you will need one of the things I've learned the most in my life is that when somebody gives you an advice that doesn't seem to solve your problem, don't discard it, just keep it. Sometimes advices are given out of time and they look like bad. You know, concerning Aitofel, uh, I mean, what's the name of this other guy whose counsel was used to defeat Aitofel's counsel? I think this, this story should be in 2nd uh, Samuel, or if not 1st Samuel. The scripture says, this is what uh, the, that guy said. Because he said the, the counsel that Aitofel has given is not good for this time. Some counsels are good, but not good for this time. Likewise, some messages are wonderful, but because, I mean, they are not just for you this time. Sometimes God will arrange that you hear certain messages ahead of the time. Some of you listening to me now, the reason God is bringing this message to you now is not because you are in a big problem now, or a, a problem that is overwhelming you. It's just that you probably will soon be and at that time, you will recall certain things that I'm saying now. So you do well to take notes and, I mean, take it seriously. Because sooner or later, I can be very sure, I can bear with you, you will need it. So, having said that, let me share with us five common types or sources or challenges or problems or troubles, whatever name you use to, to uh, I mean, to call it. Common types or sources. So if you have a challenge, problem, a circumstance, a situation, <laughs> whatever you choose to call it, trouble, an affliction, <laughs> you know, there could be any of these or a combination of these five sources or five types, whichever way you choose to call it. You have, first of all, the self-imposed challenges. You have some challenges that are, I mean, this category of challenges, you brought this on yourself. You can't blame this on anybody. This is happening to you because of certain things you did or you did not do. And quite a number of the things we suffer are consequences of our actions and inactions. There are consequences of an action, our actions and inactions. You know, one prayer I pray often to God is God, I do not want to suffer unnecessarily. I understand that there are some sufferings are necessary in life. Let's be frank with ourselves. If we will not paint, I mean, white, black, and paint black, white, let's be frank with ourselves. Christianity does not offer a each, an each free life. No, it doesn't happen. There's nowhere in the Bible do you find any reason to believe that a Christian is going to have each free life. In fact, what we have in the Bible is the exact opposite, that you are going to have many tribulations in this world. And I'm going to get there. So you are going to have some challenges that are necessary that prayer will not be able to save you and deliver you from. Okay? But then, there are some that are avoidable. Such is the type I'm talking about here now. Self-inflicted challenges, troubles, problems, I mean, and afflictions. You brought this on yourself by reason of some things you did or you didn't do. You said or you did not say. You decided or you did not decide. You did not decide, rather. You brought it on yourself. And I used to tell God, I pray to God, God, I don't want, I mean, I don't want to suffer unnecessarily. I don't want to suffer the necessary challenges and they're hard to eat, the one I bring on myself. No. If we can avoid it, the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, says a prudent man sees troubles and avoid it. But the foolish, it goes on right on. So wisdom is not just to solve a problem. Wisdom can identify a problem ahead of time and avoid it. These kind of problems and challenges could have been avoided. But you brought it upon yourself. Now that it's here, you brought it upon yourself. It's as a result of your actions or inactions, decisions or indecisions. So you brought it upon yourself. But the problem many times is that we are not able to remember that this thing I'm suffering now is a consequence of something I did, I did or I didn't do. Because many times the consequences of what we do or don't do don't come immediately. They don't come immediately. 
I've heard many times, I mean, they say it a lot in this climate, I, I mean, that uh, um, courses, courses don't work on, on students. I know some people, if you understand that, I know the kind of school you went. Generally, students, students are, are mischievous. They do all kinds of things. Steal in the name of fun. I mean, do all kinds of things. And I mean, people who respond, I mean, you still, they stole somebody's thing, and I know the man, for instance, and the woman just decided to call them people say, ah, because those who doesn't work on students. That is a lie. The reason it doesn't, it will work because only a costless cost, as Proverbs 26, verse 2 says, will not hold a costless cost. That is, there's no tangible reason for that cost. But if there's a reason for the cost you stole and somebody caused you, do not think that it will not come to pass. It will. It will. The, the reason, the problem many times is that the moment the action is done, and when the consequence comes, it takes, a, it's on many times, it's a long time. So people are not able to put one plus one together. I can't say for sure that they cannot remember that what I'm suffering now is the consequence. I mean, when you plan something, you can plan something this year and you reap next year. And so by then you are reaping, you are forgotten, you are forgotten that yeah, this is what you are sowing, you sowed. And you are trying all kinds of things, trying all kinds of palliative measures, it will not work. Because you have not yet discerned that this is a consequence of my action. The scripture says, whatsoever a man so, Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, the same he shall reap. So you will reap. As long as the earth remains, Genesis 8 verse 22, seed time and harvest will not cease. So, there will be consequences for actions. There will be consequences for actions. There will be. And many of the things we, we go through as challenges and problems in life is as a result of things we did. Some of them years ago. Some of them months ago. <laughs> there are consequences. There are consequences. But I mean, but by, by honest, prayerful retrospection, that is, you look back, you are honest with yourself, you are asking yourself candid questions, and you are prayerfully doing so. God is able to bring you to a place where you can discern that this is a consequence of this thing you did last month, last year. Because sometimes, like I said, you don't really put it together. Sometimes you did something yesterday and consequence today, you know that it's like what I did yesterday. It's why I mean, some, some of them are clear. Many of them are not. And so we are not able to trace the root of it. And once you are not able to trace the root of a problem, it becomes difficult to treat. It becomes difficult to treat. So by, 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 by prayerful uh, retrospection, you are able to see that, come, this is, this is what is happening. If I'm reminded of a story a pastor told me of recent, very instructive. He said he was, I mean, he had a doctor friend, he was counseling, he was going through a lot of problems. And they, I, mean, it was, I was counseling him, and they prayed about this problem. Nothing seemed to work. <laughs> and when you see a problem, prayer seems not to be working on. Uh, you may want to dig to the root of it. I mean, I find out to be true that anything that seems not to de- anything that seems to defy prayer needs inquiry. You need to really find out. So he said he was. I mean, but as he was. Looking at the situation and praying about it, the Lord just ministered to his heart to ask this man if there's blood hanging over his neck. What that simply means, maybe he has killed somebody, committed abortion, or hated abortion. You know, there's, I mean, a, a kind of a murder case, you know, hanging over his neck. And that's not unusual for a doctor, you know. That's not unusual, especially when I, when I just mentioned the issue of abortion, you know. Uh, um... So he asked the doctor, and the doctor often considered for a while, could not really pinpoint anything particular, you know. Then he remembered, after some days, he said, Pastor, I remember. And listen to this, listen to this, it's very instructive. He said, Pastor, I remember. I was a young doctor then. Nigeria was playing a match. There was a, an emergency case, this person needed two pounds of blood. We hung the first one, and the, I mean, it was flowing through the present system. I dashed out to go and watch the ball. By the time I came back, the first one had finished long enough that the second one to have been put there, 
And in between, because nobody was on ground, we all went to watch football. I mean, you can imagine that kind of system. That can only happen here in Nigeria. And the person eventually died. You know, the person died not necessarily because of the accident or the emergency situation. The person died because of that, that, I mean, foolishness, I should say. Why should you live somebody's life to go and watch a match? And of course, what they did was that they covered it up. It was lied to the uh, to the family of the of the, of the person that the uh, person did not survive. You know that kind of thing. That 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 is a, a terrible action. That definitely is is con- we have consequence, which obviously is what this person is going through now. You know, if not that there was prayerful retrospection, I wouldn't have known. They would just be praying, but there's blood hanging over his neck. Pastor, what do you think he can do? <laughs> the, the, I will recognize you can ask for God's mercy. Because that's life that has been taken away because of something you have, I mean, you have indirectly killed somebody. That's what it is. And of course, that we have, that we have consequence. It will. It will. So some of the things we are suffering can be, not all, some can be a consequence of our actions and inactions. We brought them upon ourselves. So having discerned the problem to be self-inflicted, you can then correct the situation where you can. Where you can. Because sometimes you can't. Like this kind of case I just mentioned now, this person cannot bring out back this person from the dead. So sometimes you can do something about it. Please, when you discover that I brought this problem upon myself, whatever you can do to amend the situation, or undo, or say, or do whatever, you can. if you can still do something about it, go ahead and do it. But if not, because there are times, again, as I said, that there's nothing you can do about it. At this time, you have to rely on God's mercy. And believe you me, God's mercy solves all problems. Mercy, nothing is beyond mercy. Sincerely speaking, nothing is beyond mercy. In fact, in arrangement of the of the hack of God in the Old Testament, the covenant is put in there, okay, and then uh, seated on it is, is the is mercy seat, placed on its mercy seat. The scripture says in the book of James, it says, Mercy rejoices over judgment. Mercy is greater than judgment. So, if by judgment you are wrong, if you call on mercy, mercy will atone for you. And the scripture says in Lamentations 3, verse 22, the Lord's mercy is anew every day. is compassion, they fail not. God's mercy cannot fail you. So, where, yes, you have brought this situation upon yourself, and there's nothing you can do about the situation as it is now, you can call on God for mercy. And as I'm speaking, I want you to look at yourself and do a self-diagnosis of your life and see if what you are going through, it just if it is as a result of something you did, okay, it's self-inflicted, you can do something about it, think about what you can do, let God minister to you and go ahead and do it. And if, if not, and even with, together with what you can do, you still call on God's mercy to undo. You know, we cannot go to the past, but God's mercy, mercy can reach into our past and take and correct even what is in the future. And so you can rely on that. Let me move on. So there is self-inflicted challenges, troubles, problems and afflictions. There are. And that's a good place to start. Always try to see where you are. When, they, when you're in troubleshooting your life, the first thing, many Christians always, every problem they think is the devil, is the devil. The devil is not responsible for most of the problems people will say is the devil. If you learn to, to self-diagnose and, and see, if you are the one at first, first, you will solve a lot of your problems that way. The problem with think, pinning it on the devil first is that even when the devil is not involved, the moment he sees that you think you are involved, he, you, you have opened the door for him to even further manipulate the situation. So the, it's self-inflicted, but because you think it's the devil, you are distracted, you are not getting to the root of the problem, and the devil has also gained the opportunity to even further make it worse and make, make what you're thinking, you are thinking about it to come to pass. So let me move on here. So not, we all not only have self-inflicted challenges, we also have some I call necessary challenges. I'm talking about 
five different sources and types of challenges that can befall you or befalls us all. And you, yours may just be one or a, very, or a combination of, of these five. We have the second one, what I call necessary challenges. These are challenges that are necessary parts of the process that will take you to your expected end. You know, we don't like to, I mean, challenges. We, you know, we like a smooth sail. I mean, but it's not just, it's not, it's not promised, and so it is not possible. In fact, the scripture says in Acts 14, verse 22, he said that we must, yeah, notice the word, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. <laughs> He didn't say we may, he said we must. So it is compulsory that you will not have a smooth sail on your way from here to heaven. It will not be smooth. In fact, the moment you chose to become born again, your life is very likely going to be rougher than it has ever been before. It is. It is. The devil will ensure it. And God will allow it. <laughs> he will. He will allow it. And he has even forewarned you. Now, this, this category of challenges are, are unavoidable. You have to understand this, about these uh, necessary challenges as I've tagged them. They are, they are unavoidable. You just must go through it. It's like, you see, a woman who is pregnant and, I mean, hoping to deliver the pregnancy, the child knows for sure, I mean, you should know, that some pain and some comfort is unavoidable. Prayer will not avert this. Or will it solve it? It can only see you through it. What prayer will do for you in this kind of problem? And this is how you know you are in this is the kind of challenge you are in. You notice that your prayer seems not to be working on the challenge, it is working on you. You see, it is not averting it, it is not solving it, but it is it is helping you cope. It's helping you go through it. Such was the case. When Apostle Paul prayed concerning the ton of flesh that was given to him, a messenger of Satan, as he says, 2 Corinthians 12, from verse 7 to 9, he said, I besought the Lord three times concerning this. I instead of God to remove it, God said to him, My grace is sufficient. Grace saw him true, but he did not solve it. <laughs> you know, in fact, he, he said earlier and later on in that chapter, he said, Well, what I came to a conclusion to do now is that, well, I will just rejoice in it. I will go through it. I enjoy it while it lasts. And that's the attitude you should have when you find that you are in this kind of challenge, in the necessary type, because it is a necessary part of your journey to your destiny. Trying to wriggle your way out of this kind of challenge is, in fact, detrimental to your destiny. You know, <laughs> let, let me use the example of, uh, of David, First Samuel 17, you remember in that first Samuel 17, he killed, a, uh, he, he killed Goliath, but before that time he told us, I think about verse 34 there, but he said, I was, I was guiding my father's uh, uh, I mean, flock, and a bear came at me, and a, a, a lion also came at me at two different times. You know, and what would have been sensible for a young boy to do, even the, the sheep and the bear, the bear and the lion did not actually come at him, they came for the sheep. What would have been sensible for him to do was to escape. I know when most of us have situations like that and we escape, we come to church, we testify. But he did not escape. He went after it, collected the sheep in both cases, and even killed the lion and killed the bear. What he did not know was that that was, I mean, it was unknown to him, but it was a necessary, that problem, that challenge was a necessary part of his destiny. It was supposed to prepare him, as we later found out, for the day when he was going to face Goliath. Had he wriggled himself out of it, escaped, he will come to a point where he will have to fight Goliath, okay, and he will have no CV, nothing to give him confidence to be able to fight against Goliath. So, when you are in this kind of challenge, the, the necessary type, wriggling your way out is a dangerous option. And I, I tell you, you will sometimes have the option of avoiding it. You know, avoiding it. Going through the path of least resistance as like water. But that will be detrimental to your destiny. What you need to do is just hang in there, go through it till the end. That process of going through it is going to make you what God needs, you, needs to make you. Another example comes to mind, talking about people trying to wriggle their way out of some challenges in life that come there with unnecessary 
for them to get to where they are going. Take for instance Joseph. Joseph was in prison. I mean, before that he was he was sold as a slave. After that, um, became a prisoner. Then he interpreted the dream. He told the is it the baker now or the butler that when you get to the palace, tell speak of me to the king. This is why I got here. I was sold here and I was lied against. I mean. That just so that I should just escape out here. And God in his infinite mercy, because I know it is God. If a man couldn't have gotten out of prison under that circumstance and not remember for two complete years, the man who helped him. You know, it, it must have been God. Why? Had he escaped, that would be a testimony. But it would, his destiny would have been changed. He would have been out of Egypt by the time God needed him to become prime minister. He would have been out. So, you see, wriggling your way will not do the job. Yes, how you will know what you are going through is such a necessary challenge, okay, so that you don't just take every challenge that comes to you and say, well, it's necessary for my part of, for me to arrive. I know some of them are not necessary. Uh, you know, prayer will seem not to work as I've explained. God will be mostly silent, but will be there, be there to see you through. You are talking, you are asking God, God, what's happening? God is quiet, mostly. In this kind of situation, and somebody said, like uh, it, that, a, God is God is a, like a teacher, and rightly so. A teacher talks in the classroom when he's teaching you, but when it is exam time, a teacher is present but is not talking. You understand? And that is the way it is when you are in such a challenge. So I've mentioned thus far that there are there is a self-imposed challenge. You brought this on yourself to necessary challenge. Let me move on. I, I mean. Let me see if I can cover one more before I end, we end in this session. Then I'll continue from there um, in the next session. There is also the uh, challenges that people brought on you. I don't know if people impose challenge will be a, the right word, uh, right um, sentence to, ex, to 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 caption it. People impose challenges. That is, people brought this on you. This wasn't brought upon you. By yourself, this is not a necessary challenge that is necessary, a necessary part of your journey to your destiny. This one was brought to upon you by the consequ by, by the actions and inactions of other people. These are challenges not self-inflicted, nor a necessary part of your life process. This was brought on you by reason of action and inactions of people around you. You need to know something that our lives and destinies are intertwined. We are connected one way or the other. It's, it, we are connected. So our actions and inactions not only affect us, but also people connected to us. So, so people connected to us, what they do or don't do in one way or the other affect us. You've seen that children are born with HIV, which means, I mean, no, no, I mean, they did, they did not commit, I mean, a fornication or adultery. It wasn't by sex. It wasn't because they use somebody's needle. It's just because they happen to have parents who, who are HIV uh, positive. You know, myself and my wife and a friend uh, we were talking earlier today, earlier today, was it to, yesterday, that um, about children who are born with SS. I mean, and one of them, she, my friend, wife's friend mentioned the, the case of a particular child that was always angry at the parents for, for making her like that. You know? Uh, that is, if not because you are AA, AS, AS, you married each other, I won't be SS. And I'm suffering now for, the, for your decision. You know? And that, that's the reality of life. Sometimes we are suffering for things we did not bring upon ourselves as it were, but it's a consequence of things other people did. And we are suffering from it. The Bible says, I think in the book of Ezekiel, that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and our teeth are set on hedge. Are set on hedge. It's a sad reality. It's a sad reality. We find, for instance, in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 21, um, the Bible tells us that three days, reading from verse 1, for, I, mean, I mean, for three years, back to back, there was famine in the land in the time of David. You know, and David inquired of the Lord. I'm sure when it happened the first year, I must have felt, well, what is happening? Maybe there was not enough rainfall. We did not plan this. We did not do this. Second year, try something. It did not work. But I thought, yeah, he woke up and said, no, there was something ordinary about it. And this, I need us to have that attitude. When something is, I mean, 
is take, I mean, a problem is lingering and persisting. Don't I mean don't don't treat it with kids glove again. It's time to diagnose, to troubleshoot, and find out what exactly is wrong. What exactly is wrong? Remember the title of my message today is "What is Wrong with Me?" An attempt at self-diagnosis. So David went to God, Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, and God told him, "Well, it's not something you've done. It's some is is as this a consequence of what Saul did. Saul had died for some." For I mean, a lot of years, at least about 10 years before that time. Now he's suffering the consequence of what his predecessor did. What his predecessor did. But that is the sad reality of life that you can suffer what other people did, as long as their lives are connected to you, to yours. And that is why we must be careful the kind of relationships we, we go through, we, we enter in, whether by way of friendship, even business. If, and very, very importantly, is marriage. There are wives that have been set back 10 years behind back because they married a, a, a particular type of husband. Likewise, there have been husbands that have been set back because of a particular wife they married. Because of the particular wife they married. You know, when you calculate in, in, in statistics, there's what it's called mean. When you have um, two numbers, let's say 3 and 10, and you calculate the mean of it, I think you should, it should be hovering around 5, 6, or 7. What that does for the man with 10 is that he has been brought back. Do you understand? Just by being in relation with level 3. Do you understand? He has been brought back. He's suffering the consequence of, me, of, of, of mingling with 3. So it is possible. When you realize that this is the root of your trouble, that is, you realize that this problem I am going through now is as a result of something somebody connected to me did. Okay? Your best bet is to go to God in prayer. Your best bet is to go to God in prayer. What God will do for you in the place of prayer is that one he will, he can exempt you by his mercy. You can call on God and say, God, I didn't do this. This person did this and because I'm involved with this person, that's why I'm suffering this consequence. Lord, help me. And God will graciously by his mercy, exempt you. He will find a way to do that for you. He will. He will. Oh, and he can also show you a way out. Like he did for David in the example I just cited now in 2 Samuel chapter 21. God told him, well, it's David. It's, I mean, they also saw. He has offended the Gibeonites. He killed them against the contract that they had. The Gibeonites had an agreement with with the Israelites that they will not kill them. They will be their ally. And they are, that, that they are going to serve the children of Israel. But out of zeal, uh, uh, Saul killed them. And you know, God honored that covenant. Every agreement God honors. God is, a, is, a, is, is aware of it. And God honored that agreement. And God told, I mean, David had to, had to sacrifice children of, some of the children of uh, of Saul just to appease that situation and that solved it. That was the way out for him. And God can do the same thing for you too. God can show you, yes, you did not do this. Somebody did this and the person was connected to you. That's why you are suffering this. But you can do this. And that will give you a way, a way out. God can you, can, you can do that. You can do that. God has solution to every kind of problem you can think of. Any kind of problem. Once you can rightly diagnose that this is what is wrong with me, then, in fact, you are, once you can know the, the root of your problem, you are halfway into getting the solution. You are halfway. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, uh, let, let me let, let's pause here. We'll continue from here in the next uh, uh, session. Okay? But thus far, I, I have been, I, I have been, I have, I have been able to establish that challenges and troubles come in different, through different means, and there are different types. I've mentioned thus far three of them. Self-inflicted, they are the, uh, that you brought upon yourself, the necessary ones that you just cannot do without having them, if, or if you need to get to your destiny. And the third one, the one people around you, connected to you, did, are uh, brought upon you. Next session, I will continue from here.